Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today I'm going to show you how to make an Apple-esque invitation with the number and a reflection with a different number on it. So no doubt you've already seen the iPhone 5 is coming out and they are using this particular image to use as the invitation. Now here is the official invitation from Apple and I've kind of recreated that. You can see that there's the number there and then the a little bit of a lighter reflection right here and then there's some light peeking through right there and I've gone ahead and I've recreated it right here using these five layers. So let's go ahead and let's start out by going to file new and let's create a blank white file right here. I just made mine eight and a half by 11 at 300 pixels per inch and let's go ahead and select OK. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to get the original number that you want on here. You don't have to use the number 12. Maybe you have a birthday party that's coming up on a certain day and then you want to reflect the number or the age of the person in the reflection. So let's go ahead and choose our text tool right there. You want to use something like an Arial Black because that's kind of a nice rounded um, font that you can use right there and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on mine I've got mine set to center justify so I'll just click this in the center right here and mine's set on 350 points so let's go ahead and write the number 12 I'm just gonna go ahead and recreate this once we're done and we're happy we can go ahead and click the green checkbox right there and you can see that this is a little bit wide and it's a little bit thick and you notice that the Apple one is just a little bit thinner so we can always go in here and hit the command T or the control T that is our transform button and we can go ahead and transform this by making it a little less wide when we're happy with that we can tick the green checkbox right there and then use our move tool to move this around to where we want it so there we have the number 12. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to put the number 5 in there. We want to make a shadow out of it. So we're going to go back to the text tool right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that text tool right there. Now this time I'm going to choose the Arial instead of the Arial Black. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to type the number 5 inside there. And when I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and check the green checkbox again. Once again, we can use our move tool and we're going to move this down so that it's right below our numbers right here. Now, just like we did with the number 12, we have to hit the command or control T to be able to transform this number into something a little bit larger. So let's go ahead and do that. We could go and sit there and change the points in the font, but I'm just going to go ahead and transform because it's going to let it allow us to get the exact width that we have here. So keep making this larger until the bottom of the five lines up with the number two right there. It's about right right there. And if I can use the arrow keys right here to move this down a little bit and then line that up right there. I can go ahead and make some detailed adjustments when I get where I want to go. The next thing we have to do is because we can't skew this number we're gonna to have to simplify this layer so if you right click on this layer in your layers palette and we go to simplify layer that will just make a number five right there we now we're not going to be able to edit this number five but we are going to be able to skew it now so let's go ahead and hit the command T again now the reason we did that was because we it wouldn't allow us to skew the number five after we unless we did the simplify so let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna go ahead and move this up a little bit so you can see it and then I'm gonna hold down the command on a Mac or the control on a PC and then I'm gonna grab this corner right here and then I'm going to skew this out to the left like this once I'm happy with that I'm gonna grab the other corner right there and I'm gonna skew this to the right so that it's looking like the number five is a shadow. Then last but not least, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make this a little bit shorter so that it looks like there is a shadow there. Now as you can see, this no longer lines up, so we do have to take this and make it a little bit smaller. So there we go, until the edges line back up again. Go ahead and make this a little bit smaller again. 
and move this around. Okay, so now that we've got that tweaked, I can hit the enter key or the green checkbox right there. The next thing we have to do is we have to make this to the where it's a diffused shadow. And how I'm going to do that is go over here under the layers palette and add a layer mask right there. Then I'm going to make sure that I have my default colors in here by hitting the D on the keyboard, which is going to set this to white and black. Then I'm going to select my gradient tool, and then I'm going to make a gradient mask right here. And there we go. And as you can see, it's going to fade from up top right here to the very bottom to where you can't hardly see it anymore. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the number 5 here because right now we're on the mask. So we're going to click on the number 5 right there. And we're going to add a Gaussian blur to this. So we're going to go to filter and then we're going to go down to blur. And then we're going to go to Gaussian blur. And we're going to add about a 15.916 pixel radius Gaussian blur. Now if you use the same numbers and the same pixel ratios that I used in mine, these numbers will correspond. If not, you're going to have to slide this slider over until you kind of get a blurry, shadowy looking figure right there. And then we're going to select OK. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to go in here and we need to lighten this up just a little bit because black is just a little bit too dark for this. So we're going to go and change our opacity here. We're going to slide this down till we get a nice light number 5 here. And there we go. Now you notice that there is Right in here, there is, let me go ahead and double click that, there's a little area where the light is peeking through. So we just need to add a little bit of white right there. So let's go back to my number 12 right there. And then we're going to add a little box right here with our rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to go ahead and click it. And then go under our layers palette and add a new layer right there. Now if I'm going a little bit too fast, that's because I'm trying to cut down on the length of these videos. And you can go back and rewind it. And I'll also have some step-by-step -step instructions on my website, digitalgoulash.net. So let's go ahead and click and make a box about the width right here. Going to go ahead and move that down so it's covering that. And then we're going to add white to that. So if you go over into edit and we put fill selection, I'm going to fill this with white right there. And there we have it. Now get rid of the ants. What do we do? We hit the command or control D and that gets rid of the ants. But that doesn't look very good. The next thing we need to do is we need to skew this a little bit. We also need to fade it and we need to blur it just a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fade this out just a little bit with the opacity and take this opacity down some take it down to about 80 percent there so you can see that there's um, some opacity there and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit command or control T so that I can skew this now if you can't see very well you can always hit magnifying glass right here or you can hit command plus or control plus and that will make this a little bit larger now how did we skew this last time well if you remember right we held the control of the command key down here and then I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna match this up to the edges right there now if you're having difficulty with that now sometimes I do too what we're going to do is we're gonna go up when we're finished and we're gonna change this so that it doesn't snap to the grid I'm going to go ahead and hit command. I'm going to make this just a little bit larger there. And then grab this over there. So that kind of makes it look like the light is peeking through there. Now you've got this awful line right there. So we're going to have to go up under filter. And then we're going to use the same Gaussian blur, which it left it right up here. And I'm going to do a Gaussian blur right there. So there we go. The light is peeking through there. Now, if you're having problems over there, if you go under the view and you put snap to, you notice that I don't have snap to guides or snap to grid selected. So you can go ahead and uncheck that. And sometimes that'll help you with creating your skew on your white box there. Now we're almost done. If you hit command or control zero, that's going to make it to where you can see the entire image again. Now, the last thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to blur the number 12 just a little bit. So if you go down to the layer and you hit number 12 and you hit your command or control J right there, as you can see, that will duplicate our layer. Okay, now that we have a copy of this, we are going to blur this one right here. So we're going to go up to filter and we're going to use the same Gaussian blur that we've been using for all the other ones. As you can see, it blurred the entire thing. But if you look at the original one right here, it's a little bit 
softer or a little bit blurrier on top and a little less blurry on the bottom. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go back to our image right here. We're going to have to use another layer mask. Once we go down here into our layers palette, we're going to click on the layer mask right there and then we're going to add another gradient layer mask. So let's go ahead and click on the gradient tool and let's go ahead and let's draw a line from the top to the bottom here. And as you can see, it's kind of blurry and hazy at the top and then it gets a little bit sharper on the bottom. Now, it's a little bit too dark again on there, so let's go jump back to over here. As you can see, it's a little lighter than black, so let's go back over here, and let's go click on the number 12 right here, and let's change our opacity just a little bit. Let's tune then that opacity down to about 85% there. And then let's click on this one. This is the sharp image, and this is the blurry image, and what it's doing is it's going from a gradient from this soft image to this hard image right here. So we want to also change this one. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'm going to dial that one down to about 85 percent as well. And there we have it. Oops. And there we have it right here. And there we have it right here. We have the number 12 or whatever number that you want to put. Maybe you want to put if a person's born on the 27th or something right there. It's their fifth birthday or their third birthday. You could go ahead and put that number over there. I hope you enjoyed that lesson making the Apple-esque number right there with the shadow that's reflected on the bottom right there with a little bit of light peeking through. Thanks for tuning in. This is Chucky from Digital Goulash. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, and please pass my link on to your friends so that they can enjoy them too. Cheers.